Mitrogata. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Sports In. I hope your week has been great. A lot of finals happening right now. We have the Digital Cup mm. and we have also NRL um, heading into finals. We have um, Inter Super Cup happening as well. Um, Lawrence, I know you've been following really closely, although your team's not performing. Wow. Yeah. Um, look, yeah, last uh, last game for the NRL, for those that won't make the top eight, uh, the bottom eight, they, they, they'll be gone. Um, last week, massive games in the Digital Cup. Uh, we'll talk all about that uh, yep. with the results uh, and the letter and yeah, Intrust uh, Super Cup as well. So a lot, lot, yep. lot of happening, um, plus, plus a, a whole heap more on the show. Yes, of yeah. course. So tonight on the show, we have all of the rugby league action um, that we'll be showing. Um, well, pardon me the results and we'll be talking about the preview what's coming up this weekend as well apart from that we have hunter's coach joining us again to talk about um the postponed round 16 that they will be playing this weekend yep. and we have the bars kphl um bar mondays um norman vanwa joining us all the way from oman so that's coming up there on standby you'll be catching them later on the show lawrence let's get on straight with the score line and yep. roll up first thanks very much uh, Dini. Uh, the the score line for uh, last week, round 24, the second last round uh, of the NRL. Knights defeated the Titans by one point. Raiders 28 uh, defeated the 16. They were down, uh, defeated Warriors, I'm, I'm sorry, 28-16. Uh, Rabbitohs, massive win over the Roosters, 54-12. A uh, lot of stories you can talk about this. The, the big one being Latrell Mitchell yeah. um, doing that high tackle on uh, Joseph Manu. Cowboys 38, finally the first win in 10 rounds. Uh, over the Dragons and then the Sharks over the Broncos. Eels first loss to the Storm, uh, unable to get uh, 20 in a row there. Uh, sea Eagles, they keep winning. They're in the top four as well, or just out of it, 36-18. And the Panthers uh, defeated West Tigers 30 uh, points to 16. We'll continue on uh, with more results. Oh, this is the latter. Uh, Storm just there. Uh, Panthers, if they lose, Storm lose, Panthers win. Panthers get the minor premiership this week, uh, this weekend. Uh, Rabbitohs right, right behind them, then the Seagulls and the Eels making uh, the top five. Sharks, all right, from Knights all the way, um, they're pretty much set. But uh, the top eight, the Sharks, um, they'll have to win in order to stay in contention uh, in the top eight. If they lose, um, the other bottom eight, uh, once we flip over the, uh, the page here, Raiders and Titans have a slim chance. Uh, they need to win, but they need the other results to go their way, their way as well. Bulldogs there. Uh, the Wooden Spooners and the Cowboys and Broncos uh, rounding off the bottom eight. Um, so there'll be some, some mad Mondays happening um, after this weekend. I don't know if it'll be mad or anything, but uh, due, uh, due to the COVID-19 restrictions. But uh, anyway, that is the NRL. Before, before you carry on, I would like to point out the conversation on social media right now. The punters, the mm. punters. What are you saying? What, what, the what's time that? and effort put into, mm. you know, looking at the teams yeah. that would be winning or, yeah. um, you oh, know, placing the bets. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what to make of it. Mm. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't you. know whether to be impressed or not. Well, look, because <laughs> obviously there's, there's there's no horse horse racing, you know, and, and yeah. so people want to, yeah, of course, yeah, uh, but do a, do a bit. Not that I'm encouraging gambling or anything. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I do, but uh, I, I only put like a certain amount, and that's it. No more, no less. Me okay. lose and me lose. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, if that makes okay. sense. Moving on, Intra yeah. Super Cup. Yeah, uh, Intra Super Cup. Uh, let's have a look at the results uh, of that round 19. Uh, Winner Manly 26 over the Falcons 18. Bears 44-26 uh, winners over the Jets. Seagulls 34-12 uh, over Pride and the Blackhawks there 28-10 uh, over Mackay uh, Cutters. Uh, the other games played Dolphins 52-12 against the Tigers. Uh, Magpies uh, last minute uh, try there 32-26 over our Hunters and the Devils 36 over the Capras on 12 points. The Digital Cup now, um, let's have a look at that. Um, man, uh, extra time and um, it was a really good game of rugby league there. Toomba 20 over the Wigman 19 and the Tigers uh, booked the first grand final spot beating the Morks, uh, PRK, Mendy Morks on 10 points. The Morks will now play the Toomba uh, this week and unfortunately for, for the Wigman, they bow out. But yeah, well done to the Tigers, Les Next Tigers. Uh, another uh, grand final um, that they will be in, and I'm sure Stanley Tappen and the boys will be ready um, for that as well. Well, that that's it. 
So uh, um, we'll be broadcasting the NSL starting mm -hmm. the 18th um, of this month. So we'll just go through um, what's um, the results from the last weekend as well. Yeah, there was some there was some surprise results, uh, Dini, of, of the Como Petroleum National Soccer League there. Um, first of all, the Northern Conference, uh, Northern Youth 1-0 over Morabi United. Uh, Lay FC there, well, they just they just go at 10-0 over the Sipi uh, FC. And Morabi Wawens, um, this I thought was a... A bit of a surprise, 1-0 at uh, Se Ignatius Kilagi over Lay City Dwellers. Uh, that is for the Northern Conference. And then this one, um, two draws in the one day in Port Mosby, the Southern Conference. Uh, first of all, my Gulf Komara. Come on, boys. Zero all against the Southern Southern Youth. And then the Palm Strikers FC. Uh, two all against the uh, Hekari United. Um, you know, no one would have picked that. Well, the bookies wouldn't have picked that. Um, it would have been a pretty good odd anyway. Um, and Ta Tavura FC uh, uh, lost to Star Mountains 2-0. Uh, so that is the Kumu uh, Petroleum National Soccer League uh, results. And this is the latter. Lay City FC, uh, five wins from five games. They're at the top. And Sipic FC, uh, just a one win and four losses there. So, yep, Lay City, Morabi Wyworms and Lay City. Uh, uh, and this is, this is the Southern Conference, Hekarian uh, Gulf. Komara uh, on four wins each, then Palm Strikers, Southern Youth, and then Central Dabaris there uh, is the top five. Tavor FC um, still yet to register a win. All right, so yeah, there you go. Wow, um, massive results and, and letters and from soccer to, to rugby league. It's all happening. All right, that's about it. Um, we'll go for a break now. Hunters coach Matthew Church coming up next, and right after that, Norman Vanua standing by to join us on Sports and Stay With Us. All right, good night, uh, Papua New Guinea. Welcome back on Sports Scene. It's time now to talk rugby league via Zoom uh, with our coach of the SPP and G Hunters, uh, Matthew Church, uh, on with us uh, on Zoom again. Hey, coach, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks, Lawrence. Uh, pleasure to be on Sports Scene once again. No worries. Thanks, man. Thanks so much. Um, a heartbreaking uh, loss there right at the end. Um, man, uh, what, what can you put it down to? Oh, look, I thought it was a really good performance from our guys in uh, five weeks without playing a game of footy. And um, and to be honest, I thought we, we moved the ball around a lot and it showed in the statistics. We you know, outran South for metres. I think we're averaging 53, nearly 54 metres per set. And, you know, South are only about 41. Um, so, yeah, we were, we were quite expansive. It was probably the, you know, the, I've been trying to get a performance like that and trying to be coach into playing a style like that for a long time and it's finally sort of um, sunk into the boys that if we get a little bit wider we can use our physicality a bit better so um, unfortunately on the back of that you know South scored four tries through through kicks so we just didn't uh, defend our kicks well uh, one of those was one off our own kick um, so we didn't kick well either so I think in the second half uh, I think we put two dead we kicked two straight into the opposition um, and then, and then a couple of times we put up kicks, and we had a number of chases around it, and then it bounced back. And um, yeah, you know, if you want to play at this level, and it becomes a bit of a set for set or an arm wrestle game, and you've got to kick well and try and suffocate your opposition, and we just didn't do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was, I was watching uh, when we were kicking it uh, dead. You got a you know seven tackle reset on the twenty meter line. That's already a big enough hill, uh, and then within that set. Uh, you know, there could be a reset from that and then it comes an even more uh, massive uh, hill to climb. So that um, obviously right at the end there, um, you know, uh, Logan were able to score. But, uh, you know, I must say a, a really good effort uh, by the boys. Um, Terry Wapi, uh, 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 during the week, um, press release came out that, um, yeah, unfortunately, he's the only change. Uh, otherwise, uh, an unchanged team for this week. Yeah, I was... Um well, Terry failed his HIA and there wasn't much in the contact. So I certainly asked the doctor about how how it was that he failed the HIA and didn't look to be too much in the, uh, in the incident. And um, out of that, I was, I was kind of cheering. That would have been the first time all year I could have named an unchanged 17. Um, but then on closer inspection, I spoke to Terry and his hand was quite um, blown up and he's broken, yeah, broken the index finger in, in the hand part. Um, yeah, so it's quite sore. So that'll rule him out for the remaining two games. Looking ahead, uh, coach, for this weekend, uh, we play the uh, Capras in uh, Rockhampton, and uh, first time against the the the, the boys, and um, first time against Nixon Put. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, they've got, um, I think they've got four or five uh, PNG Heritage players. So Jebediah Simikin on the win, Nixon Put and uh, Mackenzie Yee. Uh, I think there's also um, Chalice Atoy, uh, who's been coming off the bench for them. He's uh, PNG Heritage as well. So, uh, yeah, we had a meeting earlier this morning. I, I warned the boys that, you know, that they would have circled this date um, when the draw first came out and that date's changed a couple of times. Uh, but they'll be up for the contest and they'll be wanting to... Uh, um, put on a good um, showing against their countrymen. I think the last time we took on Mackenzie Yee at NFS in a in a trial match uh, for 2020, he uh, he tore us to pieces. He he, he, he levelled a few guys out. So uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll learn from those that mistake and and try and um, you know counteract that. In Rockhampton um, at Brown Park, this is the same place where the Cowboys and Dragons played last week. Yeah, yeah, so it's a, a really good initiative from the NRL. Obviously, everyone's in Queensland um, for the competition to go ahead. So a really good initiative to take it um, to the regional centres. I think they were bound to have a game in that that weekend where we went into the snap lockdown. I think both teams were in the air or, or something of that nature when the lockdown was called. So they had to turn around and come back to Brisbane. So, yeah, it's good to reward those regional centres with a, with a game throughout the year. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Um... You know, we have, a, again, a, a massive uh, Papua New Guinea following there. So I'm expecting the same amount of crowd that went to watch the Cowboys um, and the Dragons play to, to come and watch um, the Hunters and the Capras uh, play this weekend. Yeah, well, we certainly call on anyone that's uh, in that region or not far away from it to get down and watch the Hunters boys play. Um, yeah, they certainly put on a, on a good performance and the bigger the crowd they seem to be, the better they perform. So. Coach, um, just going back to, to, to our results, um, a tough one for you. We've, we've just been losing, um, you know, with 12 points or less. What do you think that comes down to? Uh, yeah, that's a really good point there, Lawrence. So, you know, we, we are a young, experienced side. I've said that a number of times throughout the year. Um, what that means in, in terms of performance is that you'll compete really hard for, for a set amount of time. And um, I looked through the results just recently and, um, yeah, I guess 11 of our 15 games, we've either been in front or within 12 points of our opposition at the 60th minute mark. Um, yeah, again, that, that experience or that, being, that ability to close out a game um, that that's a learned experience, and yeah, with that young side, it's just a, unfortunate that we're learning them the hard way. But if you look across the um, the statistics, and I've just done some stuff last night, um, yeah, we're only con- conceding seven more points a game than our opposition. So you know, seven point margin across the whole fifteen games is is not too bad when you consider we we have the worst goal kicking percentage in the competition. Uh, you know, we're down to like 60% with our goal kicking and, the, you know, the best Todd Murphy's is 88. That's a, you know, we could probably make up a, a fair chunk of those seven points out of, out of um, kicking better. So No worries. I, I think that's a, a, a good lesson there for our boys. So, I mean, we, we win 60 70% of the games. The, it, it's a, a totally different uh, result for us at the end of the season. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, this was, well, in my vision, you know, I was always trying to um, think long term with what we were doing, not just for the 2021 season, but um, the ability of going young, if we can keep this core group together, which I'm really excited about how they've progressed through the year, um, you know, and it's, you know, I don't like to look at statistics to try and back up your, your thought processes, but, um, you know, we have improved throughout the year and there are a number of measurable things to say that we are getting better at that. Just our game management and around our kicking, like as I said, with the South game, but it's unfortunate. And, you know, we've got to, we have really experienced halves, but um, yeah, we're still learning our lessons the hard way. Yeah. No worries, coach. Listen, thanks very much. Uh, again, this Saturday, 7th, uh, 4th of September, uh, the, you, you play the Central uh, Queensland Capras in, in Brown, Brown Park. And again, um, on behalf of all of us here, uh, wish you all the best uh, for this weekend. No worries. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, just wanted to send a personal shout out to the Mendy Murooks and Wagi Tumbe uh, as they fight off the uh, qualifying final for um, to see who takes on the Lay Tigers. So um, good luck to all teams. I uh, look forward to seeing that result. Yeah, it was a massive weekend. Um, very quickly, yeah, the, the Tumbe and Wigman went over 90 minutes. I mean, it was just extraordinary, um, a field goal to separate them. Um, but uh, yeah, in the end, Rugby League won. Yeah, exactly. I think any game that goes for nearly 100 minutes is uh, one one hell of a contest. And I, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I can't wait to watch that one. No worries. All right, coach, thanks very much. Uh, best of luck this weekend. Thanks, Lawrence.
All right, there we go. That's the coach of the SPP and Hunters, Matthew Church, uh, talking to us uh, via Zoom. They take on the Queensland Capras this Saturday um, at Brown Park uh, Oval in uh, Rockhampton. We'll take a short time out now and we'll be back with more on Sports Scene. All right, welcome back. You are watching Sports Scene. It is time now to talk some cricket. And um, we've got uh, with us uh, via Zoom is uh, Norman Vanua, the current, uh, well, current uh, Kumu Petroleum PNG Barra, Barra uh, team uh, that is over in Oman for the World Cup. Uh, finally, um, you've been able to travel. Uh, Norman, thank you very much for joining us on, on Sports Scene tonight. Thanks for having me. No worries. Well, um, mate, what a journey, huh? Uh, two years, or well, uh, a, a year and a bit uh, to wait to finally get to the uh, uh, 2020 World Cup. Um, yeah, just first of all, you know, how, how does it feel to finally know that uh, it's going to happen? Oh, it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, as I said, almost two years of um, waiting for just this moment. We've um, pretty much waited our whole lives. So we've dreamt about playing in the World Cup for so long. Even our past players from Mahuru, Jack and Bunny to now the current team that we have. Like, it's been a build-up of a build up for generations like in cricket PNG. So yeah, to kinda of make one and to actually be in one like so close by, we just yeah, we're just so excited to um, take part and yeah, just can't wait to go for it. Uh, that's awesome, mate, and uh, yeah, big congratulations to you and the team. Um just getting to to Oman. Um you know we we, we saw all the uh media of you guys leaving. Um where did, from Port Moresby, are you able to give us a you know, an idea of, uh, you know, what you went through, quarantine and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, we started off in uh, what must be on the 23rd of um, last month, actually. Yeah, August, yep. So, yeah, um, Cricket PNG just put us in a bubble at the Hilton to um, just make sure the boys, you know, didn't catch anything prior to flying. So, yeah. Well, I would say when we got to the airport, it's a totally different atmosphere to how we used to travel before. Mm. Um, we had to get there two hours earlier than usual, so five hours in advance. Um, you go through quarantine there to test you, do all these tests and stuff. And yeah, it was a different experience to when we traveled um, two years ago. But yes, getting through that in Palm and then getting to Brisbane, uh, we had to transit for 10 hours, but luckily we had... Um, there's some, some uh, form of food and the boys brought cars along, so <laughs> 10 hours went by really quickly. Wow. And then we caught up with Greg and um, Jack Gardner, and then yeah, we flew all the way um, to Dubai and to Oman. We were fortunate enough to um, fly business class all the way too, so it's, it was a great experience for all the boys. Myself, um, flying first time in business class was something new. Um, still can't get over it, but yeah, um, it is, uh, it's great what the... Um, but cricket PNG, Greg especially have done for us and put us to make sure that we're comfortable flying all the way here to Oman. Um, we spent the day in quarantine in Oman. We had a really warm welcome. Felt like home actually. Driving in to the hotel and seeing people from a foreign country um, waving the flags around and saying welcome and stuff. So yeah, it was a great experience. Got shown around the hotel and the hotel is just amazing. Can't say anything better, but we are treated like kings here to be honest. But yeah, um, again, like the, uh, management and Greg Cricket PNG um, have done all this for us to make sure that we have the best um, accommodation, best um, preparation before leading to the World Cup and our games here in Oman as well. You and know. yeah, I've got to say, like spending just one day in quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, we're just going about stuff. So yeah, it's pretty good. Um, well, just uh, taking you back to, to business class. Uh, mate, you're representing Papua New Guinea. You need to be treated um, with we're, world class. We we're all very proud of you guys, and you made it into the World Cup. So, yeah, well deserved. Uh, you're there to play uh, cricket. Uh, what, what's the plan over the next couple of weeks uh, before you get uh, to the World Cup? Uh, plan, we've got training coming up in the next few days leading up to our first match, which is supposed to be on the 5th of this month, but it got moved to the 6th. So, yeah, we've got a couple of games leading up to the World Cup um, league which is against Oman and Scotland um, later this month. And then 
in leading into that, um, we got a couple of warm up matches in Dubai and also in um, Abu Dhabi. The ones in Dubai, I think, uh, organized by Cricket PNG, like for extra warm up matches. Nice. The ones in Abu Dhabi, the official um, mm. warm up matches by ICC. So, yeah, we got a lot of cricket out of us. Um, good preparation for the boys to get those combinations right again. It's been so long since we played together. So, yeah, it'll work out really well for us. Yeah, no, that's awesome, Norman. Um, look, we'll, 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 we'll end off things here, but um, look, on behalf of all of us here at Sports Scene, uh, MTV and the rest of Papua New Guinea, uh, we want to wish you all the best. Uh, really proud of, um, you know, making it into the World Cup. Still have a long way to go to actually get uh, to, to that first game, and I'm sure uh, preparation is key. It's been two years, so, you know, what's a couple of weeks, huh? What's a couple of weeks to, uh, to, to, to get there? But um, um, as we leave off, bro, um, very quickly, um, all the boys, everyone's fine? Yeah, everyone's settling well. Um, I think we're still struggling with our 40 clocks adjusting to the times here. But um, apart from that, all the boys, this morning we had a first um, sort of like run around. We, a, we did a bit of stretching and also um, a bit of fun games as well. And we jumped in the sea. So, yeah, boys look pretty hyped about it. So, yeah, everything's going pretty well. Oh, yeah, and, well... All the boys are pretty much up at 6 a.m., I'd say. <laughs> but I think I was up at 5. My body's still just yeah. interesting. But yeah, 6 a.m. is pretty yeah. much the time everyone gets up. That's, um, so, you know, um, you're, you're what, six hours six hours behind? So if it's like lunchtime here or 10 o'clock here in the morning, uh, it's it's 4 or 5 in the morning. Yeah. No, all good. Listen, thanks so much, uh, Norman. Again, it is a pleasure talking to you. I'll be talking to Greg, and hopefully uh, we, we get some weekly uh, updates from you guys. And uh, look, all the best. Uh, looks like a really beautiful place. And um, hopefully we'll catch up next week again. All right. Thank you. All right. There we go. That's uh, Norman Vanua, uh, Kumo Petroleum PNG Bars uh, over in Oman for the World Cup, which is coming up uh, next month. The Cricket World Cup, that is. We'll take a short time out and we'll be back with more on Sports Scene. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Sports Scene. Unfortunately, last segment here on the show, time's running out fast here. So, Lawrence, <laughs> I'll just let you fly through. Yeah. Don't be slow about this. Yeah. Fly through the weekend preview before we call it a night. Thank you, Dilly. Weekend preview. This is what it looks like uh, tonight. Raiders v. Roosters. Massive game. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, the games that will be played is, if we flip over the page, here we go. Um, Sharks v. Uh, Storms. Um, Sharks win here. They're in the top eight. Okay, that's how it matters in the Eels versus uh, the Panthers here. On Saturday night, Broncos versus the Knights. We're going to win this. Broncos definitely. We're going to win. There's no doubt about it. Cowboys v. Sea Eagles and the Rabbitohs uh, versus uh, the Dragons on Saturday. Now on Sunday, uh, Titans versus the Warriors. Both these games, Bulldogs versus the West Tigers, won't have any bearing on the top eight um, unless, you know, some results go Titans way. But otherwise, uh, it's pretty much a dead rubber. That is the uh, weekend preview for the NRL. Now the Intra Super Cup Sea Gulls versus Blackhawks, uh, Magpies versus the Tigers, Cappers uh, versus our SPP and the Hunters. Uh, the, the Cutters, the Mackay Cutters, uh, will take on Ipswich Jets on Saturday. Um, the other games played uh, Redcliffe Dolphins versus Northern Pride, uh, Sunshine Coast Falcons versus the Bears, and Wynnum Manly Seagulls versus the Devils. All right, so that's it for. The weekend preview? Yep, we've got the National Soccer League. Of next. course, uh, the Kumo Petroleum uh, National Soccer League, uh, massive games. Northern Conference first up uh, in Ley, Morabi United FC versus Ley City FC, uh, a massive game this one. Um, North, Northern Youth versus FC Morabi Wawans and the uh, Sipic FC will take on uh, Tuspa Gulf Komara versus Hikari. Both teams haven't lost a game. Uh, this is the last game of the uh, first round uh, before they take a break. Southern Youth uh, versus Star Mountain, and there you go, Central Dabaris. That's where I got it uh, from. Uh, uh, from Central Dabaris versus uh, Palm Strikers uh, FC, which I think will be uh, well. I reckon all, all three games there uh, will be really, really tough. But we'll find out after this weekend who will be on the top in the Southern Conference of the Kumo Petroleum National Soccer League. Done. Did All right, it? that's about it. Before this crew, our crew chases out. <laughs> we ran out of time already. 
contact details. If you have any story tip or comments, please call us on 312 9229 mm -hmm. or email us at sports at or message us on our Facebook page. There's a sports in Facebook page and leave your story tip or your comment and please leave at least your email address and or your phone numbers and we will get right back to you. That's about it for tonight. Pleasant viewing for the rest of the night. It's bye for now.